away to the Welcome back to GDPG, everyone. Hi. Welcome uh, to the couch. Last we left yeah. off, we were about to talk to this strange human girl that has been fainted on the ground. Also, we're just going to ignore the fact been. that she has a star above her head, but that's fine. It's a quest point. Yeah, quest sure. point! All right. Maybe we should rethink this. Hey. Uh, are you all right? Uh, huh. <sighs> I was... I was in a forest, and then... <sighs> Looking for this? Yep, she's human, all right. Yeah. Glad you're okay. I'm sorry to have troubled you. And you are? Your name... Uh, oh! Right! My name! Uh, I'm Saray. Saray? Yep, nice to meet you. Well met. Is there anywhere one could rest around here? I'll need to make plans to get back to the capital. You're from the city? Well... Um... Hmm. Why don't you come to where I live? Saray, are you nuts? Are you sure that wouldn't be a problem? You barely know me. I can't just abandon someone in need. That's all. Haven't you noticed that she won't even volunteer her name? It's only natural to be cautious. Aren't you going to ask my name? Are you sure? Everyone has their reasons, but you don't look like a bad person to me. I hate that reasoning. I hate that. I because it's, it's like... It's, it's, name. Well, it's like, I'm not going to ask your name because you don't have to give me anything for me to help you. I'm just going to take, I'm going, I'm going to do everything I can to help you because I'm a kind-hearted person. And you're a pretty girl. And you're a pretty girl. But it's like, it's rude to not ask what her name is. What are you going to address her as? Like, Miss? Miss. All right, so a couple of issues that we ran across in that little cutscene. A, make Leo clip through. Um, I think, I think. We'll, right now, her it. name is what's her name? I don't know. Yeah, we don't know um, her name. So right now, there's a little bit of clipping issues with this game, which I'm just going to put this out there. If you're going to take the time to come up with the model for a particular character, and there are dangly bits, like McLeo's clo cloak bits, whatever, and they clip through stuff, I, it's a, you lose a little bit of a point with me because it's like you, you designed this to be this way. So... The, I mean, am I missing? Well, okay, it's hard to, to actually to, to build the art no. so it doesn't clip with dangly bits, and that's purely because of the physics behind it. That's fair. Okay. Um, if, I want a band called Clipping Dangly Bits. That would be a pretty good band name. Band name number one, guys. This is even my thing. So, so a little bit of a, a game art lesson. Um, basically, how those things work is that they're they're using the game's engine to animate. Um, so they're not really being animated, it's just the physics is telling it where to bounce and it has an anchor point. So like, uh, Saray's earrings, for example, right? They're just like clipped onto his ear and the physics let it bounce around. Um, but the way you would prevent it from clipping through the model is you put a collider on it. And that is very resource expensive for something that's going to always be present in the game, and that's why you don't generally have that in, on a lot of characters in Fair most enough. games. Then, one other thing. So, um, what was it? You mentioned at one point that somebody's review was like, this is the best PS2 graphics game I've ever seen. Yeah. Now, the, the, the Tales of series is not what? No, the comment was, if you think this is a PS2 game, you wouldn't be entirely wrong. <laughs> and, and the reason is, like, okay, so the models are actually pretty beautiful, right? And the lighting yeah. effects are nice. We even get some good shadow going oh, yeah. on, um, which is dynamic lighting, which is uh, also pretty crazy. Oh, yeah. Um, 
And like even the textures are aren't too bad. Like the texture on this rock is like okay. I see it definitely has like a normal map. So if you look at it like it's really flat looking, right? Mm -hmm. But when you look at it, at it like this, it looks very bumpy. That's those are normal maps, and it's literally uh, the game engine is tricking you to make it look like it has. Uh, mm -hmm. that texture. Um, it was a pretty cool technology, but that's been around for a while. Right. But then you look at like the rock clipping through the ground and it's like, mm, this rock looks like it doesn't really integrate with the world. And it's like a diorama when you're like in school or whatever and you're like, yeah. I'm gonna make a mountain. And then you just slap the mountain on some grass. So it's not really yeah. embedded in there. But it's it's persistent, right? Like it is. We we see the same thing with the trees. We see the same thing throughout the entire game. Even even when we're in the city later, we're gonna see like walls and stuff kind of clipping through each other. And yeah. it's like it works. It's Ooh, just not. Write them. Write them. It's just not pretty. So there was a, something else I wanted to mention, and that is the facial animations. I mean, these scenes are great for establishing little character quirks, like just how kind of flighty and kind of naive uh, Saray is, while also how kind of confused and very official uh, What's-Her-Name-Is. Um, I like these cutscenes. I like the... This has been a staple throughout most of the Tales games, and I think it's great. I think it's wonderful. It really gives you that anime feel, which is fantastic. However, when you have extended cutscenes that are in the in-game engine, and there, there was a solid two seconds of silence before Saray went... So it's gone on. Like, there was no, there was nothing. There are some some here. interesting pacing uh, quirks in the game, but we we'll talk about those more after this cutscene. Yeah. I'll go report this to Gramps. Guess we can't keep quiet about all this. Coming by afterwards. Yeah. Hey everyone, got someone to introduce to you. Hmm? This is my family living here at the shrine. And this is when question mark, question mark, question marks this, like, uh, <laughs> you're a real cool guy. You have two feathers in your ears. And you're talking about a family talk, that isn't actually here. I'm going to just go back to the cave and lay down until somebody else was like, you know, brains come to me. I don't want to get stabbed in my sleep. Well, yeah, that's the more concerning thing, right? Is like, are you a psychopath? I'm getting the vibe that you're now a psychopath. No, yeah. these are my family and friends behind me. <laughs> Don't you see them? Ha, this is so great. They, they, they kind of allude, though, to that, um, that she can't see them, right? Because she can't yeah. see Miklio. Um, so we kind of see this coming, right? Uh, Although, if that's... if Okay, real quick. I feel like there's an element here that we're missing. Oh. So when they walked through the archway, there was a little ripple. Right. You know, ripple yes. in the air. I, I, I feel like there's something in this realm that brings out that thing that makes people be able to see or communicate with... No. No? What that is... This is explained later on, but okay. that ripple is uh, Gramps, the, the, the grandfather that takes care of us. That's his blessing. We're entering oh, his domain, okay. and that's the visual representation. Yeah, of it. because right. if it had to do with the communicating part, she would be able to do it too. Then, then I guess I mean, my question is that if she couldn't see Miklio, and Miklio was literally this close to her, and went boo, and like she did had no reaction, why the moment again with his family? Um, I think. I think that's reinforcement. I think the idea is that Sore is so he's, innocent. Well, it's not that he's, that he's like, innocent. Here's my it's, family. It's, it's it's that he's so acclimated into this environment yes, that he doesn't think about the fact that she can't see, even though it's it's already been addressed, right? Um, mm. But he wants to make her feel welcome. That's fair. I, I think that's basically the reason. I know. I reckon I'll have to. You idiots! Hi, Gramps. I'm back. How could you bring a human into our domain? 
Easy, Gramps. Didn't you say you'd listen to Soray's side of the story, too? That's just what I'm about to do. You know full well the rules, Soray. How could you break them like this? I'm sorry, Gramps, but I couldn't just leave her there. Her kind is sure to bring nothing but trouble to our domain. But I'm her kind too, you know. You were raised along with our kind, which nurtured in you the ability to perceive us and converse with us. Normal humans have no such capacity. You should understand that more than anyone else. Well, it is true. She doesn't appear to have any resonance. But Gramps, this is the first time Soray's ever met a fellow human. Perhaps. But if she can't see or hear the same things we do, she has no business in this realm. Uh... I have raised both of you as my own since you were but babes, all the while doing my best to protect this land. And for that, I am grateful. And I did that because the time draws near when you will both serve to protect this shrine, just as all the others have done. Our priority is the peace of Elysia. Any intruders, no matter how harmless, must be cast out. Yes. Then it's time she left. Can we at least give her time to prepare for her departure? Hmm. Just make it quick. Thank you. Gramps. I know, I know, McLeo. He means well, in all things. And that's the very reason why I'm so worried for him. Well, I think next time would be a good time to really start exploring the world. Oh, dang, yeah. Oh, dang, definitely. yeah, we'll be. Yeah. yeah, look at those rocks. Look at them flowers. Man, we'll look at more rocks and flowers next time. It is, it is pretty, though, right? It is. It no, is. I, think, I think there is a level of just, like, wonderment to it. I just, I want to explore it, even my, even though it's not the prettiest thing on Earth, it's, I, it's, it still grabs your attention. It's good use of color. It is. I agree. I really like their colors. I like the vibrancy of it. I think it kind of tells you that this story is going to be epic and heroic, you know? Is that the ruin we came from? No, no, no. Okay. How crazy would that be? Like, we, we were there. <laughs> and we were... Oh, da, 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 da. Da -da -da, da -da -da, da -da -da. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next episode. Bye. See you in the archives. I'm turning into my father. I'm gonna have a hunt. Chris, when you've been your father clothes. this whole time. Oh God! Whoa! And I'm you. <laughs> I need to fix some. Wow! 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 Yes.